Dear viewer, welcome to this special moment when we are starting the 40 days of prayer. I'm sure you have heard the 40 days of prayer. And today, 3rd May 2022, marks the beginning of a wonderful experience with the Lord. The General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, moved by the power of the Holy Spirit, came up with this very noble idea that the church globally would come together in these 40 days to seek the Lord in prayer. You see, friends, there's no better way to be sure of your strength than to be with the Lord. There's no better way for you to experience the moving of the power of the Holy Spirit than to secure time for prayer. As we start off this experience of 40 days of prayer, I pray that indeed you may find a place at the heart of God where every single day you will desire to be listened from him and experience his presence and you shall be revived. As we start off this day, the first day, that on me, the topic that we are looking at is revival of true godliness. Revival of true godliness. I am Pastor Peter Nyaga, right here from Nairobi Central SD Church. And as we begin this program, I want to invite you that we seek the Lord in prayer together. Let's pray. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege of prayer. And as we begin the journey, 40 days praying, Lord, we invite your presence. We pray that this will not be another program, but another experience with you, another moment with you, another renewing from you. The Lord, we shall be more revived and more prepared for the soon coming of the, our Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray that my viewer will be blessed of you and that this moment of prayer shall be the experience they are yearning to have in the next 40 days is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You see, I, as I, we begin, um, the topic being a revival of true godliness, of course, this will have to take us to that beautiful quote from Selected Messages, book one, page 121. And allow me just to read, and I use my phone to read the very beautiful text here that comes from the pen of inspiration, talking about the need to pray. A revival of true godliness among us is the greatest and most urgent of all our needs. To seek this should be our first work. There must be honest efforts to obtain the blessing of the Lord. Not because of God is not, not because God is not willing to, be, to bestow his blessings upon us, but because we are unprepared to receive it. Our Heavenly Father is more willing to give his Holy Spirit to them that ask him that, than our earthly parents to give good gifts to their children. But it is our work by confession, humiliation, repentance, and earnest prayer, and underlying earnest prayer to fulfill the conditions upon which God has promised to grant us his blessings. Now, the blessings of God, according to this quote, is as a result, majorly, of how we conduct ourselves before him, how we relate with him, the confessions we make of our sins, how we humiliate ourselves before him, how we walk with a heart of repentance, and how we seek the Lord in prayer earnestly. And she ends this quote by saying, a revival need to be expectant only, and I underline the only, a revival um, need to be expected only in answer to prayer. Now, what does this one mean? If you do not pray, then you don't expect revival. And if you pray, then you expect revival. Now, imagine this way. From this quote I see, build prayer, build revival. More prayer, more revival. And as we get more revived, we get more reformed. You see, we are guided by the text of Psalms 85. Uh, if you come along with me, uh, Psalms 85, we are going to read verse number 6, 7, and 8 as we take a moment to pray. The word of God says in Psalms number 85 and verse 6 through to 8, 
Wilt thou not revive us again? That thy people may rejoice in thee. Powerful question. Verse number seven. Shew us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. Verse eight. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints. But let them not turn again to folly. Now this text, these few verses here, verse number six, is a question, is a desire, is a prayer. Wilt thou not revive us? The man of God, David, knew the place of revival in our salvation. There's no salvation that we will attain if we will not be revived. The reason being, when sin came, we all sank into sin. We fell short of the glory of God. And salvation through Christ Jesus brings us back to God. And so because we have the privilege of the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, what we call sanctification every day, that is six to make us have a genuine walk with God as we're being revived every day, being re-energized every day, being moved from one glory to another, getting more connected with the Lord, getting a desire to sit at the feet of Jesus every single day. This is what we are calling revival, a desire to, to stop certain ways of your life and, and desire to have, you know, virtues of life where you seek to fulfill the will of God. Now, the quote that we ran from Selected Messages, Book 1, uh, intimate that, then this will not be possible until we shall seek the Lord in prayer. At this moment, this experience of 40 days of prayer is basically to give us an experience with the Lord. But, but I also know something about the power of prayer. I have experience in my life, whenever I pray, something happens. I have had testimonies of people of God sharing what happens when they pray. And I want to let you know that at times God orchestrates events in your life just to cause a blessing in your life. God brings issues and challenges and events and uh, that image just reach out to you. And I can tell you for sure, one of the things God has done this particular season is to bring about the experience of 40 days of prayer just to bless you. Just to come close to you. Just to draw you closer to him. Just to give you high experience in this life. And it's my prayer that as you seek him in these 40 days of prayer, it shall not be a program, but an experience with God. You see, in verse number 7, it says, Shew us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us salvation. We need the mercy of the Lord. We have just come from a difficult experience of, you know, COVID-19, two years of lockdown and, and economic turmoil. We are still recovering from that, and, and many people have been affected, and we are still struggling, you know, from every part of the world. We are faced with the war in Ukraine and Russia, and we are not sure of what is going to happen tomorrow. This is a moment that we need the mercy of God. And the man of God, David, says, Shew us thy mercy, O Oh Lord, and grant our salvation. Mercy, God understands our language when we sit before him. It is when we are down on our knees in prayer that our hearts are connected with the heart of God and God seek to understand our purposes in this life. Verse number 8 ends by saying, I will hear what God the Lord will speak. The moment of prayer is not just a moment of revival. It's not just a moment of experiencing the mass of the Lord, but also is an experience, is a moment for you to listen as God speaks. He says, I will, I will, I will hear what God the Lord will speak. So in these four days of prayer, I am praying uh, that, that you may have a moment every single day to hear from God. And I will be here with you and for you that to allow you to listen to the word of God. But I want to challenge you more in your own time, at your own place. Take a moment with the word of God and listen to what God has to speak to you. Because there are certain things he will speak to you in these 40 days that he has never spoken to you. Now listen to me. And, and, and you, you are going to give a testimony. There are things God is going to reveal in your life in this experience of four days of prayer that he has never done before. Because when, whenever God speaks to us, he speaks good things to us. He speaks new things to us. He speaks hope to us. He speaks peace to us. And even says, I hear. I will hear what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace unto his people and to his seed. As we pray in this very... First day of the four days of prayer, I pray 
that God may speak peace in your life. You see, when God says peace, be still. It doesn't matter your experience. It doesn't matter what you're going through. If God speaks peace, be still, indeed, there will be peace in your life. At this moment, I want to invite you as we pray. That whatever challenge you're going through, it could be, you know, economic situation in your life. It could be marital issues. It could be, you know, your family issues, your children or your parents or anything. It could be health challenges in your life. Whatever it, it could be, I want to let you know that God is able and willing to speak peace in your life. Just listen to him and come before him in faith because he rewards those who come to him in faith. Wouldn't you want, as you start this four days of prayer, to start it in faith, believing that whatever we ask of him in Christ Jesus shall be granted. And so wherever you are, just pause and share something with God this moment. Just share something with God. Just look into your life and your heart and your experience and share something brief with the Lord and say, God, this is what I give to you today that you may take for me and give me strength, give me peace, give me hope, give me salvation, revive me and reform me. Let's pray together. Our gracious Father in heaven, thank you so much for the privilege of prayer that you have prepared for us four days experience like that of Jesus Christ when he was in the wilderness after baptism. Four days. Lord, we thank you. And I know for sure that this experience shall not be in vain. After this experience, doesn't matter what kind of temptation shall come. Just like it was for Jesus, we shall overcome in Christ Jesus. Lord, I take this moment to pray for forgiveness of our sins, whatever we may have done before you, Lord. We are men and women, so weak, yet we love you. Lord, I'm praying for your grace to be sufficient. I'm praying for a cleansing that comes from you. That you shall cleanse us and wash us clean from all manner of unrighteousness. And accept us, Lord, before you and for you. The Lord, whatever potential we shall bring to you this, these four days of prayer, it shall be answered by you according to the riches in glory. This moment, this first day of the four days of prayer, I want to commit my dear viewer to you, my father. As we have seen from the text of David, in the book of Psalms, that you are seeking to revive us. That we are here to receive your mercy. But we are also here that we may listen and hear what you're saying, what you're telling us, and you're willing to speak peace to us. My Father, whatever challenge, the struggles, tribulations, the conflict, or whatever issues could be in, in our lives, I am praying and speaking peace in Jesus' name. Lord, may you come and give your children peace. May you give them understanding that doesn't matter what the experience is this, this moment. It shall be well if Christ is invited in it. And so, Lord, we begin with you. And we seek for truly an experience with you. Like that of Moses. We seek for an experience with you. That we shall say, after we walk to the God for these 40 days, see what has happened of us. Because I know there is something unique you are prepared for my viewer. That these 40 days of prayer shall not be just a program. But a testimony. Because of what you are purposed to do. Just for them in these 40 days of prayer. Lord, I pray for myself. That you shall revive me. You shall reform me, my father. I need you this time more than any other time. I need you, my father, to guide me, my thoughts and my understanding, my steps and my desires. That I shall be truly your servant. And as I lead in this church, and I say, as, as I reach out to many other people out here, the Lord, your blessing shall be upon me. Bless my fellow pastors. Lord, I pray for my colleague pastors, Pastor Jack Oguera. I pray for my pastor, Tiro Stephen. Lord, together with their families, as we join together in this 10, uh, 40 days of prayer, I truly pray that you shall revive us and show us what you expect of us and that we shall have an experience with you even more than we have ever experienced before. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this experience. Thank you for this privilege. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my dear viewer. Thank you for being part of this ministry. I'm glad that you have a privilege and opportunity to watch this video. I pray if it blesses you, share with as many people as you can. Invite people to come for the experience of 40 days of prayer. Now, as we journey on, just choose seven people. 
think through and get seven people that we shall be praying for in this experience of, you know, 40 days of prayer. If you, you pray for them, perhaps in the first seven days, you can choose to get another list of seven or whatever you can choose. But let's see how many people we're able to pray for in this season of 40 days of prayer. Day one, third of May 2022. Revive us. Revive us that we may be reformed according to God's word. A revival of true godliness. May God bless you, bless me, bless us all. Let's meet tomorrow at the same time. Thank you.